Hey everyone, today we are going on a little gondola ride because we are talking Venice. This is the new release from Sony. It's got a lot of cinematographers around the world very excited about what this camera can do. And uh, Vistec is one of the very few retailers in North America that have exclusivity to be able to resell this camera. So with me is my colleague Richard Baxa. And Richard has had a lot of experience with this camera the last couple of months that we've had it. He's uh, done a lot of tests with cinematographers here locally in Toronto and got a lot of feedback and got to see what this camera can do. So I'm really excited to talk to you about what your experiences have been with this camera. So why don't we just talk, say, like front to back about uh, what this camera holds? Sure thing, Dale. The idea behind it, it's a fully modular system all the way from front to back. So um, what Sony has done is they've, on the very front, they put in an, um, a lens agnostic mount. What that means is they have a PL mount uh, with full metadata support. And then underneath it, by taking off six different screws, you actually have a fully active E-mount underneath right. it. That's, what, that's actually what we have up here. We have a Sony uh, G-Series photo lens on it, which allows us to put from PL glass to E-mount all the way to any sort of adapter in between. So any right. sort of lens you can think of, you can, adapt, you can put to this camera. Right. Now behind the actual lens mount, you, have, you currently have a 6K full frame sensor um, that is fully sealed in a box um, and Sony designed it so if they were to come out with a new sensor in the future, you can actually take the sensor block swap out it. and then swap it out right. on site. When you're changing sensors, you're able to take it out and put it in and you do not need a bench for it. Right, right. So this is almost, uh, I don't want to like necessarily make a claim here, but it's almost kind of like what RED has been doing. You know, you can kind of swap out sensors, uh, they, you know, they're changing their sensors, they're, they're kind of this modular thing. And I feel like what Sony's trying to do is access what modern cinematographers are getting used to is that am i off so so it's a very here? similar system minus the fact that with uh, the other manufacturer you actually send it in to get it serviced right where in this case um any technician uh first ac camera op will be able to do it on site right so where with the other system you actually have to send it in uh you pay a sum of money and then they change it for you right. but then you lose your old sensor right where in this case you keep your old sensor and then you put the new sensor in and right. you can actually swap between the two right and the and the idea too is that in, a, in an age where we're now getting into um, you know using media format glass like large uh, image circle full yep. frame glass that the worry from a lot of people I think has always been if I commit to this uh, then it's not uh, future proof and Absolutely. the idea is Sony's trying to build you something that not only gives you really good image quality but is also future proof as well it feels like absolutely so the actual hardware is designed to allow for the for a lot of uh, data pass through yep. so that's what the back end of the camera is so yep. this is essentially a data pass through where all the um the imager can actually be changed for right. future proofing the camera. Right. So at one point, whatever the new sensor might be, right. um, you can just take it out, put it in, and the actual hardware, so the actual hard wire of the camera will be able to take it. Yeah. And one of the things that I've heard about this camera is one of the challenges that people have had with Sony over the years is that it's an engineer-focused design. Uh, and it makes sense from an engineering perspective, but it was a, a real challenge for a lot of cinematographers and first ACs to understand menu systems and protocols in terms of button systems. And Sony kind of went back to the table here and consulted with a lot of cinematographers to make a much more set-friendly system. Um, have you been getting any response from that in terms of people finding it much more easy to navigate and use? Absolutely. So um, as Dale has mentioned, um, the previous Sony systems are fairly menu-driven. Yep. So you have to go into the menu, you have to set it up a lot, and then um, once you actually get familiar with the menu, it's a lot easier to control. What Sony has done now is they actually created three different menu uh, levels. So you have your standard six button quick access changeabilities. Yeah. Then once you press the menu button once, you go into a deeper menu. So your project, your time code media, your monitoring, your audio, some info, and some project details. And then if you actually hold the menu button down, you go into a much deeper subset of menus where you actually control all of it and you can change all the fine adjustabilities of this system. Yeah, and unlike the F5 or the F55, they've actually moved this to the AC side of the camera. Absolutely. So it's now on the, on the dumb side of the camera. So on the, is... um, actually with, with that in mind, uh, they actually have two monitors on this uh, system. So they have the AC side, all the main controls, and on the back end of the camera, you have the operator side. Let's swap that around. On the operator side, you now have um, your quick menu system, same as the, the one on the AC side, you have access to your frames, your shutter, your ND, your exposure index, and your wide balance, where you can just quickly go into them, select them, and then change them. Um, 
You also have, this is where you have access to the SBIS cards and the AXS cards. So these are two different types of cards that the, the camera uses. SBIS goes into the body and the AXS goes into the R7 RAW recorder. So internally, you're using XAVC. Uh, you have a choice of uh, class 300 and class 480. You also have ProRes HD for proxy recording. Yeah. Um, and on the back end of it, you actually have an R7 RAW recorder. Um, the big thing about this camera, it actually records 16-bit RAW. Yeah. Um, but it puts it into a format called XOCN. Yeah. So it's not a strict RAW format. It, it is an XOCN format. Right. Um, and within that, you currently have two varieties. So XOCN. The plane bus. The plane. On the R7 back, you have two varieties of codec that you can use for recording. Um, they're called XOCN. Uh, and within that, you have two flavors, XOCN ST and XOCN LT. LT stands for light, ST stands for standard. Yeah. Um, it is a 16-bit codec, yeah. so there's quite a bit of data. Um, I do want to talk about the new ENEL200 viewfinder sure. from Sony. So it is a full HD OLED viewfinder, so it's super crisp. Um, and it's twice as bright as their old 100. It's a nice viewfinder, it really is. And so let's turn this around and talk about some of the, the last little bits of this camera on the back end here. Um, in terms of ports, I know that uh, we've got some things that are happening with the firmware uh, that's gonna change the capabilities of the output ports. Yeah. So um, one of the things that Sony's doing uh, with this system is they're making it, as we've talked about, talked about it before, is they're trying to future-proof it. Yeah. So they're currently built the hardware. Uh, moving forward, there'll be software upgrades, so one of the things that they'll be doing in the future, it's currently a quad 3G out of the SDI. Um, and with firmware upgrades, what they're trying to do is 12G individuals. So the other thing that's very important on this camera is the amount of power outputs you have. So you have, on the very front, you have 48 volts. You also have a lens port. You have another 12 volts up here and another 24 volts up there. Yeah. Um, the, other, what, the other thing that Sony did is they actually tucked the audio ports away. So you have a five pin XLR out here with a, uh, a split out to XLR that you're able to connect. It's nice and hidden, um, keeping you away from the elements. Mm -hmm. The other thing they did is for LUT support, you have an SD card slot right underneath it. Um, once again, tucked away so you're not yeah. damaging any of, yeah. the, any, any of yeah. the hardware. Yeah, and you do a lot of gimbal work and I know that you've flown this on a gimbal. Uh, what's your experience, what's your thoughts? So um, the very nice thing about, so. The actual power is, um, it's a 24 volt in. So what I did, I flew it on the Ronin 2 uh, just recently. Um, the camera body itself is eight pounds. Um, I've taken the PL mount off and I've put the, and I've put a 55 millimeter Sony lens on it yeah. to see how light I can, and um, compact I can make it. Yeah. Um, I got 8.15 pounds out of the whole system. And because it is a super boxy design, it balances extremely easily on uh, that specific system. Right. Uh, and let's talk a little bit uh, before we uh, wrap up, just about the sensor, uh, not necessarily the sensor, but the firmware, because it is a full frame sensor, it's not a Super 35 sensor, and they have uh, an anamorphic license and things that you can get for it. So in terms of uh, what are the options for filmmakers uh, with this camera in terms of some of the sensor uh, format licensing? Yeah, so um, back to the whole modularity thing. So you can purchase the camera um, with just a body or you can get a Cinema One Pack, for example. The Cinema One Pack, what that means is you're getting the RAW 7 back, you can get the body, you can get the viewfinder, and then you can have the licensing. So uh, Sony decided that certain for certain applications, you may not require an anamorphic license. Right. So that is a paid upgrade. Um, you may also not require full frame uh, license. For example, you don't have full frame glass, for right. example. So that's also a paid upgrade. So they're actually keeping, uh, they're providing the clients with um, adjustability is how they want to build their system up. Yep. So sometimes you want all of it, so you get the same one package, you have anamorphic lens that you're renting, uh, you have full frame glass you can put it on, great, you get all of it. But if, for example, you don't have it or you're not requiring it, you can purchase that at a later date. The other thing that Sony's doing in their next firmware, version three, is they will be introducing um, uh, high frame rate recording. So they'll be doing 6K uh, at 60p, uh, 96 at 4K, and 120 in 2K. So that will be a firmware upgrade coming um, soon. Yeah. And uh, 
what I've heard also too is in terms of image quality and things like this, this camera kind of fits in a world between the F55 and Sony's sort of studio rental, the F65. Um, and it's a much more, what they say, a much more organic image. And we've already talked about Absolutely. that in terms of the, Ven the Venice color signs that have now shown up in the, F or the FS5 uh, and probably will be showing up in a lot of the other cameras. So there's a new color science uh, and a lot of people are responding very well to it saying that Sony is finally departing from a much more of a digital Video. look. Yeah. yeah, so they're, they're moving towards the, uh, your standard organic look where yeah. prior to this, Sony was always known for video. Yeah. Right, they were always video cameras. They weren't as organic as as the other manufacturers. Uh, they've now changed that with their new color science, um, giving you uh, different skin tones, better skin tones. Their highlights are much nicer of a roll off, um, and plus with the new dual um, ISO, your um, exposure index, uh, you're able to push your shadows and you're able to keep your highlights nice. Um, well, especially if you're image. shooting with 16-bit, right? With 16-bit, you're going to have this incredible Absolutely. amount of latitude yep. in post that you've just kind of unprecedented. Yep. Um, so it's a really exciting thing with this camera. That's awesome. Thank you so much uh, for uh, for that rundown of uh, the Sony Venice. As a reminder, the Sony Venice is available through VizTech here in Canada. And if you want to try the camera, get in touch with us. Get in touch with Richard here. Um, we can set up uh, something for you to come and actually test this camera out and see for yourself the pretty remarkable changes that Sony's making in their product line. So thanks so much, man. Thank you. High five.